Start game now. Welcome retro fans, this is the No Swear Gamer with Retro Reviews. Today, the Mappy display will be joining us. Because we're going to do something Namco related, that's right. We're going to look at the Miss Pac-Man plug and play TV game system from Jack Pacific. This is a nice looking unit. It has a lot of weight to it. I know you can't feel it, but you can see it. It has a nice heavy weight to it. Joystick feels decent, I think. Uh, it says right here, I don't know if you can see, but it says twist control. And what that means is you can actually turn the knob of the system either way. And that's going to be very useful in one of the games on this. It has two buttons. Uh, I am right-handed. You actually use your right hand for the joystick, your left thumb for the buttons. Uh, the only thing I don't like about the two buttons is if you want to do both at the same time, I have to kind of go at the awkward angle. I don't know if there has been... An, a better way to control that but this uh, unit right here comes with five games of course you have Miss Pac-Man you also have Pole Position, Galaga, Xebius and Mappy that's right Mappy is on there too uh, in addition to that it uh, runs on four batteries uh, it says right here adult assembly required because you know, kids, you can't use a screwdriver and four batteries. You must trust your parents to do that. So, yeah, adult assembly required there. It is a uh, system that only has one video cord and one audio cord, so it is in mono. Uh, looks pretty nice. I've seen better. I've seen worse. Flip the power switch on here. Voila, batteries inside. They're good to go. Has a little reset button in there and the menu button to control your menu screen or to go back when you play the games. So yeah, there that is the physical unit, unit itself, but let's see how the games play because what's going to be important is how the games play. So let's go ahead, plug this in our television set and see just how well the Miss Pac-Man plug and play unit actually plays. All right, so we got our four AA batteries inserted because an adult helped us assemble them and screw the cover back on thank you mom and dad what would i have done without you we have our batteries inserted they're fresh they're good we've turned the unit on we've plugged it into our tv and now we have a nice menu screen very clean you can select from your five games and of course miss pac-man is the jewel of this collection at least it's the one that most people will recognize Playing Miss Pac-Man, I found it to be a fairly accurate port. Now, when it comes to uh, systems or game compilations that emulate the arcade, I am not very picky. I'm not one of these super duper people who can actually sense the tiny little details that are missing from the arcade. I'm not one of those guys who'd be like, you know, in that second level, I specifically heard a B flat when that character hit that bump and I know for sure that in the arcade it wasn't a sharp I'm not one of those people I, I if it's close enough I'm not going to tell the difference and this felt like playing the arcade game on my TV to be honest with you the joystick worked fairly well for me there was a couple times when I thought I had pushed up or down and it didn't respond that was more rare than the norm but you know to be honest sometimes in the arcade that would happen to me too so I cannot tell you the truth if the if it was the joystick or just me being not good enough uh, a lot of these arcade games I found I am just not that good of playing them you gotta remember that arcade games were designed to eat your quarters they were designed to start out a little bit easy but then within a few minutes to say give me another quarter please so when I played Miss Pac-Man I got a few uh, levels cleared and then that was that uh, one of the downsides of playing Miss Pac-Man though is whenever your game ended you could not continue where you left off you had to start all the way back at the beginning that was a little bit of a bummer for me uh, all the games do save your high score if you're lucky enough to make one but I found that when I turned my unit off the high score was a race so miss pac-man played fine for me but i wish i could have continued let's go on uh let's look at how about galaga galaga is a classic arcade space shooter 
uh, and you can do that fancy trick, you know, where you can shoot, where you can have your uh, spaceship captured, shoot it the right way, and you can now have double ships, which makes the game a lot easier. This is one of those games where you have to push the button every time you want to shoot, and you only get a limited amount of shots. It would have been nice to have an auto fire option, but this is pretty much being strictly just like the arcade. And just like Miss Pac Man, I had a good time for a few minutes, but found myself overwhelmed. And again, uh, once you get defeated, that's it. There is no continue option. You have to start back at the first level. So it was fun while it lasted. Xevious, I think, is one of the more underrated arcade shooters. I really like Xevious. Really enjoyed it on the Atari 7800 when I was a child. It was one of my favorite games growing up. So I was kind of right at home playing this to start off with. It had been a little while since I had played Xevious, so there was some rust, but I pretty much had it down. This was a game where my thumb really began to hurt. This was the first game I played that required both buttons. The large button is for shooting, which does uh, auto fire, and the, the smaller button is for the bombs that shoot the things down on ground level, that two auto fires. So you have an option, you can just hold them both down, but it was at such an angle, it was actually painful after a few moments. And of course, you have to use that ground bomb quite a bit, so even just doing it once in a while was a little bit painful. So even though I enjoyed it, Again, it started to hurt my thumb, and again, once uh, I died, I had to start back over at the beginning. Boy, I wish this unit would give me the option to continue from where I left off, like I just put a quarter in. Uh, let's go ahead and go with Mappy. Even though I like my nice Mappy display unit, Mappy is not a particularly favorite game of mine. It's a little bit of a platformer where you kind of are this mouse, and you're running around collecting all these, all these items. Uh, you're like a little police mouse. I guess you're collecting stolen goods or what have you, including the Mona Lisa that's kind of cute and computers and whatnot. You jump on these trampolines, you go through doors, the doors can knock you back, but they can also knock the enemy back if you do, do it right. Uh, as soon as you cl clear a level, you get the same sound that you heard at the beginning of the video. So yeah, you push the button, now I know what that sounds for. It means I cleared a level, but you know what's funner than playing the arcade version and clearing a level? Just pushing the button on my display unit here. Oh, pardon me, I think I'm getting distracted. So yeah, there's Mappy, not a favorite of mine. You know, typically in these arcade collections, uh, you get a game or two that may not be your favorite. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on to Pole Position, which was kind of the surprise for me. Now, Pole Position, along with Xevious, uses two buttons. But thankfully, the smaller button is only used for shifting from high to low gear back and forth. The large button is your accelerate. There is no brake. If you need to brake, all you have to do is either shift down to low gear or just take your pedal off the metal. Did I say that right? Pedal off the metal? Metal? Whatever. You know what I mean. You have to take your foot off the accelerator. So anyways... Uh, yeah, the the thing though I really liked about pole position is the control. Now, usually when I've played the arcade version on a compilation, uh, I've been disappointed because in the arcade pole position used the steering wheel, and steering wheel does not emulate well on a controller. Just pushing left to right, you can either overcompensate really easy or you're not doing it right enough. It's very difficult to emulate the steering wheel. But this is where that twist control came in. And I was really surprised. When I first played the game, I did not get instructions when I had this unit. I didn't realize why my car wasn't turning, but then I twisted that knob and I was like, aha. And I actually found this to be one of the best controlling pole positions I've ever placed. Um, I still didn't do that great. It is, it is based on the arcade version. There is no difficulty setting. It is a standard arcade edition, so it is kind of tough. But you know what? I had fun. I really liked it. If I came back to this unit, it would probably be for pole position. Now, I'm not the biggest racing fan out there, but I really like that twist control. It really worked well. Now, when it comes to this unit, there are different variations. Jax also made a wireless unit. They also made a unit that's a little bit rare that accepted game keys. They were like these little cartridges you could plug into the controllers to uh, add extra games, but these did not sell well at all, so they didn't really do very many of them. So if you ever find a TV uh, games unit that has like a little slot in it, that's what it's for, but they're hard to find and the cartridges are even harder. I think they only sold them for the most part as bundles. Uh, you didn't really see them individually. That, that's what they were going to go for, but it ended up not working. But this unit right here is the simplest one. Now, it doesn't appear that they uh, manufacture it anymore. When I went to some of the popular big 
uh, name stores. I did not see the Miss Pac-Man plug and play unit uh, on sale anymore. But on eBay, if you want to get a used one, it looks like the going rate, and this includes shipping, which can be like six, seven bucks because it is a, he a heavier item. But whether you're getting free shipping or have to pay to shipping, your combined total price is going to be somewhere around the $15 mark, give or take. So it's a little bit pricey. I'm sure if you look around, you might find one at a garage sale. Would I recommend it? Well, this is perfect for someone who wants to play one of these games but doesn't have a video game system and doesn't want to run it on a computer. This does a good job for what it does. I really, really, really wish they gave me a continue option. I really wish it didn't hurt my thumb to play Xevious. But if you're just looking for a quick Miss Pac-Man fix, or if you enjoy pole position, yeah, I might look into this. But on a whole, you know, this is only for more of the diehards. So there you go, the Miss Pac-Man plug and play TV game system by Jax Pacific. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Uh, really hope you have a great day. Hey, if you get a moment, why don't you go check out my Facebook page? Just go to facebook.com slash the no swear gamer. I'd love to see you there, have a little interaction with you. You can also give me some uh, give me some feedback, or if you have a game or an item that you'd like me to review, you can drop me a line there as well. You never know, I might just do it on a future episode. So until next time, have a retro-rific day.